And now, Raw and SmackDown present WWE Survivor Series. Survivor Series 2003. Now, right off the bat, this has always been a guilty pleasure pay-per-view. This may not be the greatest Survivor Series of all time, but it's always kind of been one of my favorites. And this is also an example of a pay-per-view that may not have been great, but it did a lot for the company. And so first we have the classic Survivor Series match, Team Angle versus Team Lesnar. We had Kurt Angle, Chris Benoit, Hardcore Holly, Bradshaw, and John Cena versus Brock Lesnar, Big Show, Nathan Jones, Matt Morgan, and A-Train. This was kind of a letdown of an opener. Um, it did what it was setting out to do, which I'll get to in a minute here. But overall, this is a very short Survivor Series match. And these are my favorite match types. I love... Survivor Series elimination matches, and when you have one this short, it just becomes a clusterfuck. Because if you have 10 people, 9 of them, or, you know, 8 or 9 of them have to be eliminated most of the times. So that means if you have a 14-minute match, that means you're just having pinfall after pinfall after pinfall. No psychology, no storytelling, and... The good thing about this match was it did what it was setting out to do, and that is making John Cena and Chris Benoit and really setting them up for success for 2004 at WrestleMania 20. Chris Benoit made Brock Lesnar tap out clean, and then, of course, John Cena and Benoit were both the sole survivors. So, yeah, they were really setting them up, and you know how big of a fan I am of Benoit. And he would, of course, win the Rumble, become world champion. And then Cena would become the United States champion and really paving the way for him in the future as well. So this is a good building match. We'll, we'll put it that way. We have uh, Molly Holly versus Lita in kind of a throwaway women's championship match. Uh, cruiserweight title, we had Tajiri versus Jamie Noble, which is always fun and entertaining. I was always a huge Tajiri fan. Um, the ambulance match. Shane McMahon versus Kane. I'm not a fan of matches where you have to put somebody somewhere. So basically a stretcher match, ambulance match, casket match, even buried alive match I'm not really a big fan of. Um, to me it's a little too gimmicky. But I think this was an entertaining ambulance match. Um, you kind of expected more being A, at Shane McMahon, and B... This was kind of a heated rivalry at the time. This was um, being advertised as the final encounter. So, you know, it it's okay, um, but just kind of a disappointment. We have the WWE Tag Team Championship, the Basham Brothers versus Eddie and Chavo Guerrero. Um, Eddie Guerrero, another person that was being built at the time because at No Way Out, only a few months later, he would become WWE champion against Brock Lesnar. And then, of course, go on to WrestleMania 20 and defend that title against an all-time great Kurt Angle. So they were really setting him up for success as well. And a decent tag team match there. And then we have your classic Survivor Series match. Stone Cold's team versus Bischoff's team. Basically, if Stone Cold loses, he will no longer be the co-GM. So we had Stone Cold's team, Shawn Michaels, Booker T, Rob Van Dam, Bubba Ray Dudley, and Devon Dudley. Bischoff's team consisted of Chris Jericho, Christian, Scott Steiner, Mark Henry, and Randy Orton. So when I think of classic Survivor Series matches, this is one of the ones I go to. This is probably my favorite Survivor Series elimination match of all time. And this is just phenomenal. Um, the result may not have been that great for a lot of people because it meant the end of Stone Cold's character on Raw. But Stone Cold was on his way out. You know, we kind of knew this was coming. WrestleMania 19, we saw his final match against The Rock, finally putting him over. And I, I just don't... 
I don't know. It's very mixed because the results angered a lot of people. It drew heat. But that's really what it's supposed to do. It's what it's meant to be. Stone Cold wasn't going to be here forever. And that's something people had to really come to terms with. Because he was so over and he was the biggest draw since Hogan. And this was just a great match. You had Randy Orton being the sole survivor. Him and Shawn Michaels putting on a great match ending. You know, Shawn Michaels was bloodied. He, um, you know, he ended up losing. And then, you know, you saw kind of the aftermath of that, of him feeling bad and, you know, blah, blah, blah. Shawn Michaels, yeah. But, you know, this was a solid, maybe like a four and a half star match. And to me, this should have been the main event. Because after this, you know, masterfully put together match, we had um, Triple H versus Goldberg for the World Heavyweight Championship. You all know how I feel about Goldberg. It is no, it, it's no secret here. I hate Goldberg. And, you know, for the World Heavyweight title versus Triple H, who was, you know, basically untouchable at this time, his reign of terror, Goldberg won. You know, he won the world title, which is very surprising. But, I mean, it's a big four pay-per-view, so it's not that surprising. You know, if you're going to do it, I guess this is where you're going to do it. But, yeah, this is just... When you see this happen, you'd rather have Triple H. At least for me. And that's saying something with 2003 Triple H. That I'd rather have him as world champion. But overall, you know, this was a pay-per-view very memorable for one thing. And there's a reason why I'm talking about this last. Which wasn't the main event. This was the co-main event. We had The Undertaker versus Mr. McMahon in the Buried Alive match. So, um, I think I've said it before. I hated Biker Taker. I hated the American Badass. I want the Dead Man. To me, that's who Mark Calloway is in WWE or WWF. So, this match did a very good thing. It buried that stupid character... And we finally got to see them building up to the return of the dead man. And, you know, realistically, Kane, he may not be the most exciting wrestler in the world. But that's the one that makes sense to kind of bring that character back. And this is a very bloody match. You know, um, I guess it was a botched blade job from a punch. So, yeah, not often you see that. Uh, he literally... Throws one punch, Vince's buckets of blood. So, probably hit an artery. But, yeah, this was just kind of a throwaway match of Vince getting beat up for a few minutes. And then, you know, Undertaker being buried. He had the, you know, the pyro going off, burning Taker. And then, of course, being buried by the bulldozer. And, yeah, this is, to me, a positive thing. I hated the character of the American Badass. Hated Biker Taker with a passion. I still hate it to this day. I know a lot of people love it. But uh, I have kind of the unpopular opinion there. So overall letter grade for this show, I'm going to give it a B-. minus. This is a pay-per-view that knew how to build up for the future. Whereas nowadays, pay-per-views are just clusterfucks and don't know what they're doing. And don't have anything they're building to. So I give them huge credit for that, where, you know, this may have lacked in a lot of really good matches, you know, and had a few good matches, but it really built towards the future for WrestleMania 20 and 2004. So huge credit goes to them for that. But I hope you guys enjoyed this review. Let me know your thoughts down below. For now, peace out.